Uh, yeah, so this session is called Governor Ramita How to Pitch, Plan, and Build a Citizen-Centric Web Portal with Drupal. My name is Steve Leving. I'm a tech lead at Open Software and a certified Drupal developer. Uh, I've worked exclusively with Drupal for the last five years. Uh, I'm also a certified Scrum Master, certified product owner, um, and I work with the sales team uh, a lot at Open Software when it comes to bidding on projects, um, shortlist presentations, uh, and things like that. So Open Software, we're located in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. Uh, we're founded in about 2010, and we currently employ about 30 people. Uh, we have three dev slash sprint teams at Open, and it's my team that was assigned the uh, Bermuda project. So I was part of the process right from RF all the way to um, deployment, um, and we're still working with them today. So as for the agenda for today, uh, essentially we're going to review a case study of how uh, the government of Bermuda switched over to Drupal, and how myself and Open Software was part of that process. Um, also want to share, there's a lot of slides in here that um, from the government that essentially is um, Open was awarded the project, um, open won the bid, but we want to make sure that we stress the point of equally Drupal won the bid uh, and Drupal won the, the project. Um, so as much as a lot of the things say open because it was us that submitted essentially the proposal and got the contract, um, it still is a big win for, for Drupal itself. So today we're going to look at some background, we're going to look at the response from open, we're going to look at the selection process, uh, a bit of the planning and build process as we move forward, kind of what's next for the government and the portal as it is today, uh, and any conclusions. So in terms of background, um, essentially how did the project come to light? Why was there an RFP even put out for the government? Uh, so looking at some problems that they had initially, um, they had a current system called Plumtree um, by Oracle. Uh, we've never heard of it before we took on this project. I don't know if anyone in the room has ever heard of it. Um, so Plumtree was a company many, many years ago and it was purchased by Oracle and Oracle essentially just took over the licensing costs from it. Uh, so um, since essentially nobody heard of it um, and they had tons of problems, obviously they were looking to switch to something. Uh, part of the problems were out-of-date content, uh, not user-friendly, very poor search, very unreliable, um, it would crash almost daily, uh, lack of services. Uh, since Oracle took over, that costly maintenance package and licensing fees that they had to pay for uh, was never configured properly, band-aids over band-aids. Um, and essentially, uh, one of the big problems is that people were getting so fed up with the portal as it stood, uh, a lot of departments were actually um, taking their content out of the portal and just building their own websites um, with no standards, no structure, anything. A department would just spin up a Joomla site or a WordPress site, in some cases a Drupal site, even just a static HTML site just because they didn't want to deal with the portal. So, not going to bore you with all the items in the RFP, but essentially some of the, the high-level items that they were looking for um, that we bid on as part of the process was becoming a trusted source, getting back to the way that the portal was meant to be when it first was launched, um, get all the department data back into the portal um, so the residents and businesses of Bermuda um, can actually use the site for what it's supposed to be for. Convenient and mobile, I'm sure you can imagine uh, a portal that out of date wasn't mobile friendly. Um, you couldn't use it on your mobile device or tablet. Um, so that was a, a big thing going forward. Um, and just engagement from the public. So things like digital services, forms, feedback, uh, making sure that it wasn't just a one-way system that the residents of Bermuda can, can also give back. And some of the operational goals, so self-maintaining, obviously no system is self-maintaining by this. They meant essentially they can maintain it in-house. Um, they can run their own updates, things like that in-house. They didn't have to rely on other people or pay support contracts or pay licensing fees in order to maintain. They wanted the system to be measured, so essentially analytics, surveys. They wanted it to interact with back-end interfaces, so something uh, modern enough, unlike their plum tree system, that can talk to other APIs, um, talk to other back-end systems, talk to the transportation system, and so on. 
um, since this portal would essentially replace everything in the government um, running all of their, their systems. In digital services, like I said, so things like paying a parking ticket, reporting a pothole, um, things like that, that here in the US, us from Canada kind of take for granted. Our systems have done it forever. Um, Bermuda had nothing like that. Um, and still today, there's still some services that, that aren't online. So we jumped to Open's response. Um, so how we essentially pitched the project, how we met with them even before submitting a proposal, uh, and some of the key items that we wanted to, to focus on. Um, so obviously, uh, for those that, that work in the government or work for the government, know that there's a grid that needs to be filled out and we have to score on that grid. Um, these are the key items that we want to pull out of that, uh, of what we focused on when talking to the government. So that being, um, we had to sell Drupal. So from any government, or especially a government that was used to proprietary systems um, and hasn't ever really used open source, we just had to sell Drupal itself. That was pretty self-explanatory, I think. We had to sell open. Um, so obviously Drupal needed to be implemented, uh, customized, themed. So we had to sell ourselves, essentially. And we had to sell the fact that we weren't on the island. So we were in Ottawa, Canada, and obviously they're in Bermuda. So not being on the island, how is that going to move forward? So again, a lot more to it, but those are some of the, the key items that, that we focused on that we believe actually um, led us to, to win the contract. So in terms of selling Drupal, um, outlined some three key points here. Um, one of which uh, being, uh, I think, the most important, and that's community and existing technology. So existing technology in terms of Drupal, contributed modules, um, but we also sold community. Um, they're very big on community. They're, they're used to being alone on an island and they didn't necessarily want to feel that way um, with a vendor. So we actually sold us and we sold this event and we sold all the people that contribute to, contribute to core and build um, contributed modules. So not something that we tend to put a lot of focus on in our proposals, but for this one we felt the need um, to um, essentially sell us as we were selling Drupal. Um, government adoption, so making sure Bermuda wasn't alone, along with the community aspect, knowing that the US government, Canadian government, um, the news that um, Australia moved all of their items over to Drupal, making sure that they just weren't alone. And then of course, uh, no surprise price, um, licensing fees, recurring costs, or the lack thereof, um, coming from um, Oracle where they were paying um, hundreds of thousands of dollars a year for licensing fees. Um, pretty easy sell to say that there'd be no more fees. So in terms of selling open ourselves, um, obviously experience going back to talking about the grid system um, that are typically in pay place, obviously we've got to sell the fact that we've worked with governments in the past, we've worked with the Canadian governments and other governments, so utilizing that uh, experience. Expertise. Um, within open, and I think um, this can be shared with other agencies trying to, to win some bids with, with go big government contracts as well, is just the, the certifications, the best practices, the standards um, that we have in place as an organization. So again, a government that has strict policies or standards or used to um, proprietary systems, when they are going into the open source world or the Drupal world, making sure that they were aware that we still had standards and we still had best practices just because it was open source doesn't mean we just develop on a whim or install something on a whim um, there is kind of a, a method to our madness as well uh, as a proprietary system and the partnership so partnership um, will kind of be a theme throughout uh, some other aspects of this presentation as well um, we really want to position ourselves um, as partners with the government not just a vendor um, we wanted to make sure that they knew that we were working with them uh, as one team. Um, and just making sure that we involve their team um, whenever we could. Again, the whole um, thing that I mentioned before of them just not being alone, um, we were with them kind of along the way as one team. And we still have that relationship today um, through support work that we do with them to make sure that, um, that we're there for them. And I think uh, when it comes to selling open for the partnership piece, um, it's not that um, we took strides or we um, are the only partner a vendor can be or other uh, agencies can't also be partners. I think for the aspect of, of 
putting it here and as a key item, I think we just focused a lot more on it than, than other vendors would have or did. So selling off island. So I highlighted all these in red because I think they're all um, kind of tied in together. Um, so how do we make them feel comfortable that we were in Canada and not going to be on the island 24 seven? So regular check-ins using um, use Agile um, at Open. So um, them being part of daily stand-up sometimes, sprint planning, um, them being part of backlog grooming, uh, reviews obviously, making sure that we always had that constant communication um, went a long way. Our approach on collaboration kind of ties into those check-ins as well, making them involved in planning, um, making sure that we were in the, if we were in the middle of architecting something, we picked up the phone and gave them a call. Um, we put them on a video conference, um, caused us to essentially purchase better video conferencing um, software and cameras and things like that, but lessons learned, um, we definitely made it work. And then travel. So knowing that we weren't on the island 24-7, uh, making them aware that obviously we were willing to travel, didn't have to twist many arms to go to Bermuda in February from Canada. Um, so um, the team back home um, obviously was happy to, to leave Canada in the winter, um, but it was still a big piece that in the proposal, we still um, made them aware that at key milestones throughout the project, we were going to travel to the island and kind of be with them to hold their hand um, through things like discovery phases, content migration, and the go live week. So selection process. So essentially, how did the government decide? Um, what were some factors? These following slides, um, most of them are actually from the director of e-government um, from the governor of Bermuda, Martin Walsh. So we did a, this presentation at DrupalCon this year and he attended with me. He couldn't make it this year, but we'll still go through his, his slides. So um, the next few are, are definitely from the, the government's perspective um, and how they um, did the selection process at their end. So in terms of responses by country, just some fun facts, um, how many people submitted. So six from Bermuda, three from Canada, two from the US, one from India, and one from the Bahamas. Um, they followed a pretty standard um, RFP process, um, posted online for essentially anyone uh, internationally to bid. Um, no surprise that Bermuda um, was on top there. And with that, how did open source um, essentially win the bid? Uh, so looking at this table, I'll spend a little bit of time here kind of explaining um, the process that they went through. So on the left hand side you'll see four segments. Again, they obviously had a, a grid system that they went through, but this is at a high level of how they kind of decided. So um, those four segments are build, buy, subscribe, and open source. So essentially build, um, these were the aspects of people who would build um, a system from scratch for them, or do they take it upon themselves to build a system um, internally? That's one option that they had. Do they just buy a system off the shelf, install it on some servers, and away you go? Subscribe. Um, do they go with a SaaS type platform? Um, do they just pay that high licensing fee or that recurring monthly cost um, and just um, go with a subscription model? Or do they go with open source? And open source essentially can be all of the above, um, but they still use it, um, their own segment for that. Then across the top, essentially we have the differentiators for each of those segments. So own, do we actually own the software after? Do we own the solution? Is it ours? Um, can the functionality be flexible? Can we update it whenever we want? Can we do um, a change anytime we want? Cost, no surprise there. Uh, reinvent the wheel. Are we going to reinvent the wheel with whatever solution we choose? What's the speed to market? Uh, where's the support staff? And what's the flexibility of technology? When it came to support staff and technical flexibility, they were more leaning towards infrastructure, hosting, uh, things like that, uh, of where that support lies and where the technical uh, flexibility may lie. Excuse me. So if we look at build, um, so if they build their own or have someone build one for them, um, obviously strong advantage to ownership. They would own the system. Uh, they would be able to update its uh, functionality relatively easy. However, the costs were through the roof. They have to hire new employees or hire a consultant. Um, 
or another firm uh, to build something, but knowing that they're building something from scratch, uh, the cost uh, would be high, uh, along with reinventing the wheel. So since they're just building something that probably already exists, um, ties into cost as well. Speed to market, um, kind of on the middle ground, they decided that depending on how they build it internally, um, it can go either way. And then support staff and flexibility. Um, so do they have to hire more support staff? Do they have to host it internally? Do they have to buy their own infrastructure? Uh, things like that. So in terms of buy, what happens if they just purchase a system off the shelf? Uh, kind of middle ground all the way through. Um, so they don't necessarily own it, um, but it might be okay. Uh, can't really update things on a regular basis. Cost is, was okay. You're not really reinventing the wheel. Speed to market was a little bit higher because you're just buying something that already exists. Uh, support staff, um, usually if you're buying uh, prepackaged software, there's someone there that you can call, um, like a Microsoft. Um, and typically if you buy it, they help you with infrastructure or hosting as well. So kind of the, the middle ground there. So then if we look at subscribe um, and open source, so subscribe, again, that SaaS model, um, what happens if you just pay those recurring costs? Uh, ownership is very low, so uh, there's really nothing to own. Um, the functional flexibility of subscribe, um, since it's in the cloud, uh, developed by someone else, there's not a whole lot that you can update yourself. Um, cost was again middle tier, but where things actually started uh, becoming a strong advantage for them is obviously they're not reinventing the wheel. The speed to market was high. There was plenty of support staff available um, and the uh, flexibility of the infrastructure they ne didn't necessarily have to, to worry about. So when we get to open source, um, essentially the uh, first few um, scored the highest. So open source in terms of ownership, obviously they would own everything that was built. Um, own with quotes, obviously it's open source, but at least own the solution that was built. Um, they can um, change the functionality however they wish. Uh, the cost was relatively low to go with open source, even though that uh, a vendor like Open needed to be um, selected. They weren't reinventing the wheel. Um, Drupal already existed or open source, whatever platform was there already existed as well as contributed modules. Uh, but then it started slowing down for open source when it came to speed to market, um, support staff, and, and that flexibility. So if we jump over to the responses by CMS um, that they received, um, four were Drupal, three were SharePoint, two WebSphere, one Sitecore, and then um, LifeRay for one developed. So this was a company that wanted to develop it for them from scratch. And then they got one bid for hosting only. So at the end of the day, um, we go back to this table and essentially the winners um, were Open, Drupal, and Acquia. Uh, so uh, on the open source piece with Open and Drupal, um, clear winner um, using the color coding that they decided. However, they still didn't want to host internally. Um, they still didn't want to have to have all their own support staff, things like that. So they actually combined it with subscribe um, and used the Acquia Enterprise Cloud um, for their infrastructure, um, which actually sped up the speed of market a little bit. And um, they also opted in to pay for Acquia's um, technical support. And knowing that it's their own infrastructure at Acquia, they're obviously going to support it so they didn't have to worry about the technical flexibility of it. So a little bit more details on kind of why Open and why Acquia, why Drupal. Um, so many government clients, this is both for Open and Acquia. Kind of goes back to those original slides of experience and things. Um, the fact that we worked with the Prime Minister's Office, Transport Canada, uh, and many other agencies. Extensive modules and community. So obviously with Drupal having contributed modules, um, they knew that there was a lot out there that we can do out of the box, so to speak. An impressive staff and partnership. So this, again, continues that theme of, of partnership, having a, a young, hungry team um, that just uh, essentially got this big um, government contract to um, redo the entire government portal. Um, we're kind of hungry um, to achieve good results. 
And again, going back to this is a key one for open, I, I don't think it's necessarily that open did a better job um, or can do a better job at being a partner with, with a client. Uh, I think it's um, that we just positioned ourselves that way and essentially just spent a little bit more effort um, getting that across to Bermuda. So just continue on again. So low cost and within budget. We'll look at some numbers in a, in a minute. Um, but essentially, um, they, it's the government, so they have to look at the overall cost of things uh, and looking at that. Um, and two items that actually fell a little bit short were out-of-the-box analytics. Um, in terms of uh, Sitecore actually had this completely out-of-the-box, the exact analytics that they wanted. Drupal didn't. Um, we know that there's Google Analytics and other various modules that can be into play. Um, so they, that kind of came out afterwards. Um, but initially, it was one thing that was actually um, left out. And then uh, the, Martin from Bermuda also wanted to share that Acquia actually came later. So Acquia bid um, previously for hosting and they were actually um, not chosen. And essentially Bermuda just didn't want the hosting to uh, the data to be in uh, the US. Um, they didn't mind working with a U.S. company, they just didn't want the data here. Um, but through discussions with Acquia and knowing that they have the U.K. Um, cloud um, in Ireland, um, Acquia was eventually chosen. Um, so getting to some interesting things, um, some of the numbers um, from Bermuda. Um, so Martin at Bermuda is very comfortable sharing these numbers, which a, a lot of governments won't, uh, or at least try hard not to. Um, so essentially their capital budget for this project was 1.9 million um, to start when things got approved. They anticipated that it would cost about a million dollars. Uh, and after a bunch of cutbacks, the actual budget in reality, surprise, surprise, was half of that at 500K. Um, so first two were estimates, the third was the actual result, and then we have to keep in mind that if they're cancelling their Oracle um, subscription um, that we talked about previously, they're also making up about $200,000 um, in that licensing fee that, that went on top of this 500 k as well. So they had about seven uh, to play with. So looking at the five-year total, so at the end of the day, things came down to Sitecore and Open slash Drupal, obviously. Um, the 1.15 million over five years, that blue line, that is essentially kind of status quo. If they did nothing um, and kept their system going for five years, um, it would actually cost them 1.5 million, or 1.15 million, sorry. If they went with Sitecore, um, it would actually be 1.7 million over five years, but going with Open and Drupal ended up coming in at about 500K. Um, so a little bit more than the 500, but with that um, additional two that I mentioned, um, it was within reason. Um, so when it came down to pricing overall, kind of a no-brainer here as well, um, with Drupal, um, with a vendor like Open, came in a third of, of the cost uh, of the second, um, the runner-up essentially in the process. <laughs> So getting into planning, so we went through the RFP process a little bit, we went through the, um, the proposal, uh, essentially they um, chose a winner, uh, a vendor and what technology they were going to pick, um, so kind of what next. So yay we won, but we kind of brought it back to the office, everyone was excited, um, but now we essentially had to transform an entire government's portal um, at a little agency in Ottawa, so very exciting. Um, but kind of what do we do from here. So I'm not going to go into all the details of everything we chose to do, but knowing that we had limited budgets um, for things, um, that 500K that I mentioned before, that wasn't only for Open's time, that was for consultants, that was for um, user feedback, that was for surveys done, that was for content strategy, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so for the piece of the build itself, um, with the things that we mentioned before of uh, being partners, having an approach of collaboration, obviously we used Agile um, and the framework to, to move forward with that. We use prioritization methods. Um, this was all new to Bermuda, so essentially we had to teach them about all of these frameworks and methods 
um, in order for them to buy in so we can actually proceed in, in the project. So prioritization was one of the big ones. Um, as I'm sure you can imagine, they had a laundry list of things that they wanted the portal to do um, on day one. They weren't going to get everything. So through prioritizing, making sure that we can essentially get the top items, the MVP, if you will, um, to go live and any additional items would go into uh, phase two um, or any su future support work. We chose Drupal 7. Uh, so we started this project right when Drupal 8 was released. Um, but again, not wanting to write a lot of custom code, um, wanting to not wanting to do a lot of um, implementations of third party items, um, we still chose to go Drupal 7 um, with this project. And then moving forward on some key items, again, we wanted to do as much out of the box as we could, at least for phase one, at least for that MVP to get things out the door, um, to get things live. Uh, we'll look at the timeline in a bit, um, but we had a very short timeline as well. So um, some key modules that we use from security, um, again, being government, they really want to focus on certain items. So secure, security kits, secure pages, password policy, honeypot modules that are out there already um, that essentially just had to be installed and configured. From a UX perspective, things just like navbar, style guide, and minimal um, were used in, in Drupal 7. Things like uh, assets, they had a lot of PDFs, um, as governments do, um, with different reports and things that had to be on the site. So things like media and Linkit modules um, were used. Solar, so if you remember their plum tree system had a uh, very spotty search um, and being with Drupal and on Acquia, essentially going with Solar and Acquia search um, to make that search kind of top notch for them. Um, also, we have to keep in mind that uh, Bermuda is a British territory, which means they actually spell color the Canadian way, um, color with a U, favorite with a U, whereas there's still a lot of Americans on the island that spell it without a U. Um, so Solar actually went a long way for that very small thing um, that we were able to configure things still right out of the box that if you search for color with or without a U, it would still search for both words, um, favorite, things like that. So still a small win, um, but a win that still meant a lot to them. People can actually find the content that they're looking for. And then like I mentioned, Acre Cloud was used um, using their UK data center at the end of the day. Um, made Bermuda happy. So sharing this quote um, from Adirond K. Wilson, who's the director of communications with the government. Um, don't want it to be a shameless plug for open. Uh, obviously, I'm very proud of the work that we did. Um, but again, like I said at the beginning, want to replace the word open with Drupal um, and make sure that uh, when we give this presentation, we have it a few different places that we feel that although it's a win for open, it's definitely a win for Drupal um, to go into another government and essentially transform that government, um, push out all the proprietary software and um, open source for the win. So looking forward, um, what's happening now uh, with the portal? So right now, like I said, they're focusing on digitalized services. So we take it for granted that we can pay a parking ticket online or report a pothole online or the slew of other services that, um, that we can do. Um, they're just starting that process. So now that the portal is there and live, um, kind of what's next. So the phase two has always been um, that we would um, start this um, services uh, portion. So right now, essentially, um, there's just links all over the portal that go to third party systems or legacy systems. And the only communication on the portal essentially besides just web forms and, and standard feedback is just two-way communication. Um, so still a lot of work to do. Um, but as part of phase one, at least the portal was out uh, and they know that this was coming soon. So the items that are in progress today and will come into the future are essentially, like I said, those services and, and business processes, making sure that e-payments e um, and bank bill payments are, are being um, built into the system. Um, MuleSoft ESB Pilot uh, has been launched to make sure that we can have RESTful APIs uh, within the system for all these services um, so we can connect to legacy systems and then more standard reporting. So right now we're using Google Analytics, um, things like views for reporting, statistics within Drupal itself. We're just building on all of those items as well. 
So when it comes to just conclusions of kind of the, um, the case study or the overall project as a whole, uh, we look at dates and times. So pretty tight timeline um, to go from content strategy and contracting and everything all the way to deployment. Um, so starting in October and essentially launching on April 1st. The actuals of those, we got off to a horrible start. Um, with the contract not being signed until December, but two months later. So just going through procurement processes and things like that. Um, so obviously uh, wasn't overly thrilled on both sides um, to start the project late and know that the end date didn't change. Um, a whole other topic on how we dealt with, with different things on that. But essentially we picked up um, some steam and made up some time um, on the hosting. So. Initially, since they weren't going to go with Acquia, they were going to host internally. The provisioning of those servers and things had to be done. Since we went with Acquia, the provisioning of servers essentially happened overnight. Um, so we made up time in December um, for hosting, and then things kind of got back on track uh, from there. Um, it says here that the new portal was live on April 1st. That was their kind of official day based on fiscal for the government. We obviously didn't want to launch on April 1st, um, so we launched the day before. Um, so, actually a day before launch. When it comes to pricing, uh, so these are items that, that Martin is comfortable sharing um, that I think are, are valuable to see um, of just what was the overall spend for the government. Um, what did it cost them for things like RFQs, RFPs, some design consultant work that they did. Um, how much was it to actually build and maintain the portal in phase one. Um, how much was hosting up front and or the annual cost of hosting, uh, what was the cost of the content uh, of the portal. So going back to my original statement of plum tree with content being all over the place, other departments using other systems and other websites, everything had to be consolidated. In most cases, content needed to be rewritten, et cetera, et cetera. Um, what's the cost for that? The initial digital services, what did we uh, spend moving forward on that? Um, an annual cost for that is to be determined because we're right in the process of, of working with those. Um, and just miscellaneous costs um, to essentially the total of 660, um, which fits in about the 700 range that I brought up earlier. We look at initial results of the portal. Um, so not the best results either. We did a, a survey in June with the residents of Bermuda uh, and essentially satisfaction went down to 32% and usage went down to 48. So um, almost an all time low. So bad news for everyone involved that we launched a portal um, and people weren't happy about it. Um, however, we kind of realized afterwards that people just hate change and it was more of just a change aspect that the survey was done relatively right after launch. Um, people were still getting used to things, uh, and a lot of those survey results were deemed kind of falsified in the sense of just chalking it up to change, with very minimal changes um, in the process or in the portal. We actually ran another survey in October, um, and the numbers in October satisfaction jumped to 41 percent, and usage jumped to 66 percent which actually um, was an all-time high um, for the most part. So without um, doing a whole lot, just giving people time to adapt to change, um, not essentially freaking out as soon as we got the survey results, um, things almost kind of corrected themselves. There's obviously still work to do. The portal's not um, perfect. Um, there's other aspects that need to be looked at, um, but at least um, in the latest survey, um, good results there. So lesson learned um, as one of the final slides here from Bermuda themselves. So throughout the process um, from a government, from the people that were actually reviewing um, the proposals, went through this process, what were their lessons learned, which essentially came back to open or valuable for any other agency. Um, so resources, time and budget was big for them. Uh, essentially they're advocates now to open source is the only way. Um, going in the cloud is the only way. Agile is the only way, um, and make sure that the, the project team is motivated. Um, so obviously there can still be arguments for, for both sides, but um, they definitely changed their mindset over the, the course of the project. Uh, vendors should be a partner. Again, that theme, um, make sure that, um, that if you are um, kind of bidding on these projects according to Bermuda, 
that they are saying like make sure that you are a partner um, don't just come in as a vendor don't just send the sales guy to give a sales pitch and leave um, make sure that there is that, that partnership there keep momentum going um, this is one that they wanted me to highlight um, so they're saying that the most beneficial and rewarding work actually came after live um, making sure that as soon as you lo launch something you just kind of don't forget about it and, and leave make sure that you definitely do keep that momentum going which goes along with building um, for the future so they realize that they're judged on the new content and the new services and not necessarily the things that they fixed so they thought that they were going to be judged on all the the things that were broken in the past that they corrected and obviously humans didn't look at the past and just said well now this is broken though or now you need to fix this um, so essentially just just keep it going um, for future use one size does not fit all um, so a uh, cookie cutter proposal isn't going to fly um, projects are unique government are unique people that work for governments are unique um, so make sure that um, things are kind of tailored get to know them a little bit um, and how to sell a solution. So functionality first, stress low risk, save low cost to last, um, open software even though we were the lowest um, with Drupal compared to something like Sitecore, we weren't the lowest um, bid. Um, we were still somewhere in the middle um, and they left the score of lowest cost to last, um, making sure that they were actually gonna get what they want and not just pay the least. Um, yeah, and then they just say that that'll essentially clinch the deal, or at least did for the government. So just a couple screenshots here of the portal. Obviously, it's online. You guys can, can visit it, just how it looks now on mobile, which is one of their key aspects, how it looks on tablet um, and desktop. Uh, and Martin wanted me to share that on the desktop version, there's that little feedback tab that you can see on the right-hand side that if you guys do want to go to the... Um, the site gov.bm um, and give a little bit of feedback or, or what you think. It's obviously welcome for the government, but we're still working with them, so um, welcome for us as well. And that's it for me. Questions, guys? Yep. How did you get the developers there to get up to speed on Drupal and be able to do their work? So we have a large training um, aspect at Open itself, so we're big on professional development and we have our own training plans for our own internal staff to go through certifications, um, keep the momentum going for, for learning itself. We actually just treated the developers in Bermuda the exact same way. Um, we invited them, we created almost training plans for them. Um, when we flew out there we stayed for an extra day to run some training, um, back and forth communication, give them exercises, they then call us, video conference back and forth. But essentially when it came to that, we truly treated them just like they were our own employees um, and treated them as if we had a professional development plan for them. Um, obviously that came with a little bit of budgeting at Bermuda side to make sure that their staff can be trained. But again, that was the whole partnership and collaboration piece of, of making sure that if we want to include them in our project and we want to be collaborative, then we got to train them and they got to be up to speed because they didn't know anything about Drupal. When you were proposing on your cost estimate, did you know how many people they were going to provide for you that would be developers that would train? And then the second question I had was, did, they had a list of requirements that they articulated probably in the state of work. Yep. And when you were giving your price, um, you had said, you know, we needed to help them understand prioritization. But were you forthcoming in your proposal that you're not going to get everything? That's yep. Absolutely. So um, what was your first question again, sorry? How many people did they yeah, so tell they you were, that you would have at your disposal? So when we did the shortlist presentations and we actually met with them, they actually had the whole team there, um, including their developers, uh, head of communications. So right from the get-go, we kind of met them, shook their hand, knew who was going to be involved. How many were there? Um, I'm going to say eight. Yep. Um, and then um, for your second question, um, just being super transparent, we did bring that up um, in our proposals. We do align uh, everything with Agile. We do bring up prioritization. Since they haven't heard about it before, we kind of had to teach them along the way. Um, being Going back to that partnership, making sure that, um, and I know it's hard with some RFP processes, you can't necessarily talk to them during the process. They actually allowed us to talk to them during the process, so we were able to explain certain things. But being very transparent that if this is your budget and this is your timeline, you're not going to get the 500 things on your list. 
So let's start going from top to bottom and see what, what's important. Yep. Yep. Anything else? All right. Thanks, everybody.